Hey, welcome back. I'm again Steve Witter from KoogFan.com. For this segment on NIL, most people who follow athletics, I think, know what it is by now, name, image, and likeness, which allows college athletes for the first time to be paid for their name, image, and likeness. But the interesting trick is that the universities have no control over it. And it's really um, an arrangement in which the athletes work their own deals with companies. So we've had a group here of Washington State alums that includes Robbie Tobeck, the former Cougar great you may remember from football. And Robbie's group, the Cougar Collective, is working to secure uh, help from Cougar alums to help our student athletes. And Robbie told me something that just tell us what's happened in the last two hours. Well, just in the last couple hours, our website, cougarcollective.org, that's uh, cougarcollective.org, uh, has gone live, and it, we now have a donate button on that website where people can go on, and you can donate any amount of money you want uh, to support our Cougar, uh, WSU athletics and our, our athletes uh, through NIL opportunities. And um, there, there's a, if, if you want more information on it, there's some... There's some uh, uh, question and answer section on there. There's good information on there. But this is one of those things that's needed. This is the, the day and age where that we're in. And uh, we have to compete like Cougars compete. And the exciting thing is this thing just went up this after. We haven't even promoted this thing. All I did was put a tweet out. And, and we've, we've already raised a couple thousand dollars. And that's, not, well, that's without even making an ask yet and stuff. So I know Cougars, when they're challenged, Cougars step up to the plate and Cougars get things done. And I have no doubt that uh, as we promote this thing and as, as people see this need, uh, Cougars are going to step up and, 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 and Coach is going to have uh, uh, what he needs to go out and recruit and, and uh, our players are going to know that they're going to have deals uh, coming to them. I'll piggyback off of that real quick because as Robbie alluded to, the game has changed. Right. And, and Cougs, we have to change with it. And part of that is just showing our spirit and coming together in the collective is going to be the new era of the NIL because regular people just like you and me and all of us Cougs can contribute to it. You don't just have to have a business anymore uh, to give someone a sponsorship. Uh, so it's going to be the new era of, of how I think uh, Washington State stays competitive right. in the new NIL market and that just isn't football. It's right. basketball, it's volleyball, it's soccer, it's all of our sports across the board. So uh, just excited to see where, where this new venture goes. When we uh, had most of this panel together three weeks ago in Spokane, Robbie was talking about the urgency of getting this going in a hurry. And obviously, the Cougars mobilize quickly. Yes. Well, you know, it, it, years ago, we used to talk about the arms race in college, football, college athletics. I, I'm, I'm a football guy, so I always talk about football. But college athletics, it was always about we got to have a new weight room, got to have a new locker room, got to have an indoor facility. We got to have facilities. That's the arms race in college athletics. Well, let me tell you right now, we have great facilities, but unfortunately, the new arms race is NIL deals. And if you're not competing in the NIL space, you're not competing in college athletics today. Period. End of discussion. You have the greatest facilities in the world. But if you don't have NIL opportunities for your athletes, they're going to go somewhere else. And we've seen that happen already at Washington State University. And we don't want to lose our guys. These guys go out and they work their tails off recruiting, bringing in the best athletes uh, that, that we can bring in and win football games, basketball games, volleyball games, whatever it might be, soccer, whatever it might be. We love winning, right? Well, we as alumni, we have to, we have to help win and, and, and really there's never been a greater opportunity for alumni to be close to the closer to the program than there is now, and that's through NIL deals. And real quick on that, just because you know, as Robbie alluded to, because he went through the recruiting journey, yeah. the recruiting phase of it has changed. And the first, one of the questions I get asked from families and players all the time is, you know, what is going on in Washington State as far as the NIL? Uh -huh. And to be able to tell families now, after Cougar Collective is launched that we're off and we're running. And right. I think that's an important piece of this journey as we keep going, because official visits start for us this June. And to have that in our back pocket, I can't be directly associated with it, but know the good uh, uh, people of Washington State and our Coug fan base everywhere, uh, is just supporting our athletics and, and our players and our student athletes is, is very important. So with that and recruiting as well, 
we get a lot of the stories out of ESPN that have the crazy numbers of $8 million to a quarterback, et cetera. Honestly, that's probably not going to happen here. This happens in conjunction with being who we already are. And so as long as we have the ability to create opportunities, I know we said this happened in a hurry, but six months ago, we, we probably had our first meeting together. Yeah. And we looked at what is this going to look like for the coaches that are currently on the road in Texas, in California, in Florida. What will they need to be able to compete? And we got to a point in multiple sports. Right now with football, we don't have to go names. They signed a pretty good recruit, one of the highest that they've ever done in this market of volatility right now. Basketball did the same thing a couple weeks ago. Soccer will continue to do the same. Volleyball, we're seeing the same thing happen. So it's not, it's not the let's get to $8 million, do something crazy, and not be who we are. It's the let's create opportunities within what we're already doing, because this is now the new normal, and then complement that with the coaches, the people in this community that we already have in places like this. And so that, that's what's worked for us. We are winning. You can see it on the scoreboards. I won't go down with what's happening on the west side to other people. They have a lot more money, and it's not converting into what we have because we're combining that with who we are. And it's pretty cool to see that happen here. The best part of what Sherman says is you hear about the million-dollar deals, but it isn't just that that impacts student-athletes. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, just as much as giving to a walk-on so he can eat every meal a scholarship player does, there's so many different ways and avenues that we can take this, this down a road that I think is going to be really inspiring for all Cougs. Coach, it seems that NIL and the portal are typically uh, discussed in tandem. They are separate yeah. things. Nick Saban has said the present model is unsustainable. Now, NIL probably isn't going away, but on the portal side, what recommendations would you have to make it at least more manageable? Well, I would say this. First off, when everyone asks me about it, it's a positive thing, okay? NIL is a positive thing, but just like anything else out there, it's positive in the right light. The transfer portal is a positive thing, but just like anything in life, it's, you know, it needs to be in the right framework. So I think there's always situations and circumstances that someone needs a new start and a new beginning. Uh, I think they're working currently on tightening the windows down, I think is what we all learned. Uh, you just can't transfer whenever, right? After spring ball, nobody can lose their whole offensive lineman because that's what could have happened, right? So I think they're working diligently to put uh, just really good framework around uh, the transfer portal. And, you know, I, we wouldn't have Cam Ward without it. You know, so there's a lot of positives to guys getting an opportunity for themselves that I think has been much needed in college uh, athletics for a long time. So... We just got to make sure we're keeping it in the right framework. And at Washington State, you know, I tell guys all the time, we will not be a talent acquisition program. We will still be a high school, developmental, find the kid that's in small town Washington, like Abe Lucas, and watch what he turns into, right? So I think that'll be, you know, what we do going forward. But we'll always have to understand how to find ways to enhance our team. And that's how we will use the portal here at Washington State. So the fall uh, portal for fall uh, athletics at May 1, I believe, was the deadline to yeah. put their name in. So when does it reopen? So essentially after your last game. Okay. You know, and instead of being open from your last game all the way to May 1st, hopefully there's a closure period uh, within that. Because what we're also finding out is it's amazing. It was a big disadvantage to be a semester school, right? The quarter schools had an opportunity to get kids in for spring ball. So it ended up being a competitive disadvantage, right? So like I said, there's guardrails that we're putting in place and, and we'll be very competitive with it going forward. Okay. So while your emphasis is on the high school players, you have very selectively and effectively found some outstanding transfers to come in. Yeah. in. In all the national rankings of Portal, Washington State's considered one of the winners. Talk about some of the new players coming in. I think the biggest thing is we kept it within the framework of what we wanted. Uh, players that coaches previously knew, right? There's a lot of those guys. Guys that are moving up from a, a lower division or guys that are coming back home. Those are the three parameters that we set when we attack the portal. And I think when we stay in that framework, you can have positive results, you know? So the biggest stat that people use is snaps gained versus snaps lost. We're one of the tops in the country. 
okay? Because when you play football, and, and Robbie knows that at many different levels, and you know, I was a Division Three player, that's why we look different. He's Division One, right? <laughs> Different positions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look like a fullback now. I played wide receiver. Uh, but when, when you go, I don't even know where I was going with that, but when you put those frameworks of all levels are different and there's a fine line. So when you play at a high level, even though at a group of five, like I came from at Wyoming, you're really good at football, right? So we try to focus on those guys because you cannot replicate college experience. You can't replicate those Saturday nights under the lights. So reps. we had an opportunity to bring a lot of guys that have played a lot of meaningful reps, and they're used to kind of pushing through adversity. So that's how we got there. And obviously, you know, Cam Ward, just been impressed, too, with the guys that we have added, their character. You know, Cam came into a tough situation. You know, we had an opportunity to really put his stamp on it, and he did it by putting his nose down and just working. Because we got a group of men that whoever we bring into our program, they respect work, okay, because that's what we're about. And as soon as those guys are about that, it's amazing. They just feel part of it uh, really quickly. Most of the people that are coming in appear that they'll be immediate contributors. If not starters, they're going to play a lot. Can you talk about some of the uh, individuals? The uh, transfer guys we got? Okay, so uh, obviously Cam Ward, you know, exciting to take the reins over of the offense. Uh, Grant Stevens was a huge addition. You know, he's an offensive lineman. Uh, we have a huge need at offensive line. That's where, you know, Robbie, we got a couple snaps left in us, right? Wish, you wish. know, um, you know, we just signed Cam Johnson, uh, who's a tight end, uh, who's going to be one of our tight end H-backs, uh, a great pass catcher and a, and a weapon. Uh, Dayon Henley, all Cougs fans should know the name Dayon Henley. Uh, we've lost a couple, you know, linebackers from last year's class, but he's going to plug in that Jihad Woods role. He's probably the most athletic linebacker that I've ever been around. And that's saying something because Logan Wilson is the starting mic for the Cincinnati Bengals. And then Jordan Lee. I think he'll immediately replace Daniel Isom at strong safety. And once again, uh, came from the University of Nevada. He's just been a football guy. These guys are football guys. Uh, and I think it's important to that core group of guys you've gotten a chance to see. And some of the other guys that are coming in will get a chance to see those guys this summer. One of your former bosses and mentors was Craig Bowl at Wyoming. And you, like everyone who has ever coached with him, speaks of him not only with admiration, but with near reverence. How much do you follow his model and what makes him a special coach? I just got an opportunity at the Pac-12 meetings to see Coach Bowl, And uh, it's funny because even now he goes, Jake, you still remind me of me. You know, and it was, we had one of those relationships, and it wasn't father-son, but I just, he always told me he could see himself in me. And just the work ethic and a little bit of that old school toughness. Uh, but he believes in football is football, right? Football is life's greatest teacher, right? And when you get knocked down, it really tells you a lot about who you are, right? And using those moments to teach and develop young men. Right, so those have always resonated with me. I'm just a small town Wisconsin kid, right? That chip on my shoulder has been there my whole life and even now in this position, like I just, there's just so, so much I've resonated with. But he's a big believer in the teaching process, okay? Coaching matters, right? So taking things from the, the film room to the walkthrough to the reps. Nebraska and Coach Osborne was known for their you know, double reps, right? So nobody stood around. They'd have four inside run drills going at one time. You know, so the old school mentality, the grit in your fingernails, and just doing things the old fashioned right way, uh, that's kind of what, you know, I embody through coach. You know, but then now I just make sure I always put my own stamp on it. Sherman, you're a former coach and you're a former, I guess you're never a former Marine, but you are a Marine Corps officer. So you have been around exemplary leadership your whole career. What impresses you about Washington State's leadership and ethics? Appreciate that. And I was thinking about Cam Ward and the situation. We talk about situations that you're walking into. And uh, with college athletics now, I know mental health is a big thing going on, a crisis that we're all trying to wrap our heads around while we're doing this. So. I think we see the headlines and we move past forward from them and don't really assess what's happening to a 19-year-old. And from a leadership standpoint, imagine that you're walking into your first day at work 
in every national publication, people know how much you make, where you came from, who you are, your family's names. You're walking to lead a hundred other men that have just came out of battle together in a particularly rough time. And there's not a single negative thing that I've seen from that point in time off. And you're willing to take your time, that you're on vacation right now. Some people, there's no amount of NIL money that would take you out of Texas to fly up here for a day, to come give your time to sit down with other people and take pictures with other people's kids. And so without even having to talk about who he is, you know, what coach is teaching, we can see that in the players that we have. You can see that in the resiliency of the team that's got through there. And so that's what, for, for me, that's what I see when you're evaluating that, because there, there should be a stop button to putting more on these, these guys and these girls. And right now, they're primed for these opportunities because we're seeing them persevere through um, a lot of issues, a lot of stuff I didn't have to deal with as a player at 19. So, so from a leadership standpoint, that's exactly what I see in the unit and the individuals that are on the field here, which is pretty cool. And what motivates me to try to, you know, get them a plane ticket to go home, you know, bring them to Seattle for the first time, do things like that. And one thing I'll, I'll piggyback with that off of Sherman too, just off of leadership, but the biggest pitch I have to recruits is that Pullman and Washington State creates connection. Connection, you know, that Robbie can really speak of that's generated by you, okay? The players, by the faculty, by the staff, by the student body. It's generated from within, right? Because, you know, I can have every player to my house in eight minutes. You can't do anything like that in Seattle, LA, the Bay, Phoenix, you can't, right? So that connection is what we all live on. And when you're in that locker room, when you're on those fields, when you're on the volleyball court, it's just amazing the type of connection that I think we all share. And I think when you get to these events, I know I feel it. I know I'm still learning about it. But I think it's something that Robbie can speak on that is just, it's just different. Well, you know, and, and, and I'll piggyback on Sherman a, as well. But one of the things I, I, when I was a young player, you know, it was all about X's and O's. And the coach has got to put me in this position, this, that, and the other thing. And then the longer I played, you know, I was fortunate enough to play for a long time. So the longer I played, I figured out, you know, it's 11 on 11. There's only so much really a coach is going to be able to do for me, right? Um, so I started looking at a coach, and really I started doing this when I got here to Seattle to play for Coach Holmgren. And, and I started listening to the, the most important meeting of the week for me was Monday, the day after our game. What does coach have to say? Win, lose, overtime, Top, you know, whatever it was, what is coach going to say today, right? And so to piggyback on what Sherman was saying about, look, you know, ever since that point, there's been a different, there's been a different message, a different, a different feel. Well, I listen to coach after games this year, right? I listen to him in his press conference. I listen to him, uh, you know, when, they, when, when he became the intern. And, and, and by the time they announced him as a coach, I knew there was no brainer. We had to have this guy as our, as our head coach permanently. Thank you. And it, and it, and it, because he got the W's on the field, but it was, to me, it was what he was saying and what he was doing off the field uh, in that press conference to the team, the messaging that he had and how he cared for those boys. That's, that's, that's what sold it for me. So, uh, you know, you uh, I, you know, just my experience, that's what matters. To follow up on that, all the years you played in the pros, you had teammates who played for every school in the country. Do your, did those teammates have the same affection for their schools that you had for yours? So uh, when we were in the Rose Bowl, I, and I don't remember I, if it was the, the Michigan or the, or the Oklahoma Rose Bowl. I believe it was the Oklahoma Rose Bowl. When, when, when we played Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl, I had one of my best friends um, from uh, Atlanta. I was playing in Atlanta at the time, and he was a USC guy. So I went to the hotel and, and we hung out with, with, uh, with Coach Price and we saw the coaches and we had a good time. There's a lot of alumni around. He came to all the alumni stuff with me and he goes, you know what? I went to USC and we would never do anything like this. We would never have this opportunity to get around people the way you guys do. He goes, I get it now. I get it now. Because, uh, you know, the other schools, they just don't, they, re they really don't have it. And I remember... My rookie year, I, I found a place in Atlanta that sold uh, uh, Washington State hats. And I was all excited. And I told one of the guys on the team, oh, I found a place. And he goes, 
so what? You're in the pros, man. What do you care? And I was like, well, I just do care. You know, yeah. it's, this is yeah. my school. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of affection for your school, and there's a lot of pride when you watch your team. But i got to say, there's just a little bit more here at Washington State. Yeah. That's, a, that's a nice little humble brag to be able to say. I don't know what Rose Bowl it was I played in. No, I, I didn't play. Unfortunately, I didn't get to play in them. I, I had to buy tickets like everyone else. But, uh, but it, was, uh, it was good to be there, that's for sure. Well, I still remember the Michigan Rose Bowl. I had seats very low in the bowl, and, it, and they had put uh, crimson pom-poms on every seat. And I remember turning around and looking up and seeing... 50,000 pom-poms waving. I think everybody got a chill out of that. It was amazing. It was an amazing scene, and I can't wait to go back there and shake my pom-pom again. <laughs> All right, we're kind of running to the end of our time here. How about a closing statement from each one of you on NIL or being a Coug? So one, just if there's any message to take away, it's okay, and we're doing it the right way. Um, I know since the last time we talked three weeks ago, NCAA's put out a new policy. California's apparently going to pay half, you know, the athletes some amount of money. The Big Ten might sign a billion dollar deal that implicates things. None of that stuff impacts what we do or how we're doing it. And this is the right way. And these opportunities are resulting in real experiences for our athletes here. So it's okay. We're doing it the right way. If you have questions, you should, because it's going to change tomorrow on the next story that comes out. Um, but, you know, and it's happening because everybody's talking and we're talking and we have transformational, not transactional relationships here, which is, which is good to see. So it's OK. We're doing it the right way. What Sherman said, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. What matters is what we do. Right. I, I can't care about other people. I can't care about what they're doing. I care about Washington State and what Washington State alum are doing. Um, you know, so that that's the starting point right there. And, and I know a lot of people have a lot of different feelings about NIL. And I get it. I get it. I honestly do. And I have a lot of feelings about it, too. But the fact is, this is where we're at. It's, it's 2022 now. I believe it's 2022. But uh, anyway, it's 2022, and this is where we're at in, 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 in college sports nowadays. So we have to compete. We have to have that pride, that cougar pride that I know we all have. And we have to compete. And we have to, you know, we just have to be involved. And like I said, there's a great opportunity to be closer to the program than you've ever had. We've got a lot of good ideas and a lot of things that are going to be coming out over the next year. But right now, what you can do is you can go to cougarcollective.org and, and find out more information. You can hit the donate button and, 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 and donate and, and tell all your friends about it, post about it. Uh, I post it on Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Repost my post, whatever you want to do. But uh, you know, let's get the word out and let people know that there's opportunities out there now. I just want to piggyback, you know, what Robbie said, and I want to thank Robbie. You know, I think you're, you know, he's done an amazing job putting this together, you know, and there's a lot of hard work behind the scenes that not everybody sees, and, and I know you love the Cougs, you know, and I've said this before, it's, it's my time to be the keeper of the program. You know, the program, Washington State isn't Jake Dicker, right? I'm the keeper of the program at this moment, and I'm excited about where we can take it. And we started off this presentation with Dr. Chilton, Right, with that big picture with that apple cup in the air. And one biggest thing I like to tell everybody is that your hands are on that with me. Right, we're all in this together. And the NIL provides a new way to impact and to hold that trophy with us. And I think that's a big part. You can be involved, right? You can help the student athletes. It's no, no longer just watching the games on the TV and, you know, I'd love to be a part of it. You can be. And that's the exciting thing. Okay, and we all need to do it together. I'm really honored to be the head coach here at Washington State, and go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Coach, I just thought of one more thing. A news report out this afternoon that the Pac-12 is opting to go away from divisions and go to one unified league. What are your thoughts on that? Well, right now it's going to be a unified championship game. We're still going to be in divisional scheduling uh, as of right now. And how can you argue, right? The two best teams that won the games in the nine Pac-12 games, they go to the championship games over the region. So it's one of those things as an ultimate competitor, let, let's do it, let's go. It would have helped us in 2018. You would have saw Gardner Minshew without the snow, right? And we all know how that would have went, right? Okay, so you would have saw him in a rematch in a championship game without the snow. So I think it's positive for our league and uh, same. Football is changing every day. 
And it's just uh, Pac-12 is going to be at the forefront of it. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. And go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Thanks, everybody.